Hi there, and welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. Um, I'm Bill Schwab, as is usual. I forget that I don't introduce myself very often, but I figure by now you know who I am. Um, today I'm going to do something. It's going to be another uh, video that will be part of my series that I've been doing on salted paper printing. Now, if you haven't seen any of those yet, I'm going to put a link up here right now to the uh, to the playlist that I've been building on this. You know, and you can see there how I've made the print. But what I'm going to do today is rather than take you through making a salted print, I'm going to take you through covering a, um, an already existing salted print with some, uh, some gum, a gum over basically. You've probably seen my gum over uh, platinum workshop maybe. Um, I'll link that up here as well. Basically, what I like to do is use a gum layer or several gum layers over an already existing um, print that I've made. Um, in order to accent it slightly or to tone it um, much as the same way that you would tone a, um, a silver gelatin print back in the day when you're, or I say back in the day, but when you're printing a silver gelatin print, you, you sometimes tone that print to not only um, preserve or increase the longevity of that print, but also to give it um, an added bit of beauty or should I say, um, uh, you know, what, what would I use, what word would I use? Just a, a definition, sort of uh, added definition to that image. Um, uh, so it's going to be no different on this print, although this is something I've never done before. Now, some of you have been working in platinum and palladium and you probably realize it's gotten extremely expensive. Palladium has gotten really expensive and um, I'm kind of a frugal photographer, although um, I do like to work with it and I and I do continue printing in palladium, but I have been along the way kind of dreaming of some other uh, base print that I could use that wasn't going to cost me so much money to make and that I could maybe even make larger prints without having to swallow a lot and uh, print a you know $20 coating on a big print to uh, see if it works kind of a thing. So I've been looking kind of for other processes and I've tried Van Dyke Brown. I haven't tried Calotype yet, but and I have tried salt printing before to add a gum layer to, um, but it hasn't worked for me in the past because I wasn't doing it correctly. And one of the things that I was not doing correctly was I was, um, you know, I was just printing a, a traditional salt print what I, and not toning it in any way. So what was happening is I would dry the print out. It would be, um, it would be looking really nice. And I would go to the step that I'm going to go to right now with you in sizing the print and basically have to re-wet the print. And in rewetting the print, it was lightening the image and then the sizing was going onto the image and it wasn't allowing it to dry down the way it was supposed to be. And uh, it was modeled and it was horrible and quite a mess. And I just kind of deemed it as unsuccessful for me and I sort of moved on. But, uh, you know, recently with my um, getting interested in, in salt printing again, um, I've started to tone them and I uh, realized I had not tried to tone one of these prints that I had done before. So uh, in toning that, you're kind of increasing the longevity, you're, you're coating the, uh, the, the silver um, particles basically with, with gold or whatever metal that you're using. And I chose gold on this one, and you've probably seen that video. Um, this, this was the print that I made in the last video, the salted print, and this is told, toned with gold. And so what I'm gonna do now with great hopes is coat it with sizing and see if it works again. I tried a test on this a while ago and it did work. Uh, and I realized, oh, you know, I mean, silly me, I should have toned the print in the first place to preserve it a little bit more before I moved on and tried to wet it again and add gum and all the other things. So anyway, I've done that now. This is a nicely gold toned print. And uh, you can see here as well, it's got some coolness to it. I toned it a little bit longer. Um, it's got some cool in the mid-tones, which is really nice because normally what I like to do in a gum over print is to add um, kind of a warm overlayer at first in my highlights and then add a kind of a cool tone into my shadow details with another coat of, uh, of gum. So with this one, it may help eliminate that or at least help accentuate because of the, uh, the gold tone that's already in here. Now, what I'm going to do here first is to size it and sizing is also, I'll leave a link here for that. That was also in my gum over series, but it works the same way with this. And my sizing that I've got set up here right now is, um, 
a uh, kind of a, uh, a gelatin, uh, just a normal gelatin is here that I've mixed. It's just normal, unflavored, uncolored gelatin from the, uh, from the grocery store. And I've mixed uh, about 40 grams of it to 200 milliliters of water here and then heated it up, bloomed it kind of, it has to bloom a bit, stirred it, uh, heated it up right now. And I heat it on one of these mug, mug warmers here. Now again, that's another video. So check that out if you're interested in doing the sizing. So what, the reason that I do the sizing is to protect the print and to um, prevent staining from now on with the dichromates that I'm going to use in doing the gum bichromate process. So uh, what I need to do is to coat this print first with my sizing. And so this is the gelatin that I've made, as I said before, and I'm going to pour out about, um, you know, what have I got here? About 20 milliliters of, uh, of the sizing. And, I'm going to add in a little bit of uh, formaldehyde, just a few drops, four drops of that. Um, for every five milliliters, I usually go uh, a drop and I think I've got about 20 here. So the reason I put the formaldehyde in is as a hardener and that will help the gelatin harden uh, as it's drying and become permanent part of the print. So I'm going to do that right now. And the way that I do that is with one of these. This is a, uh, sorry, just about smacking it there. This is a, um, um, a coating rod that I use. Uh, I'll put some links to this below, but anyway, you can get these at photographers, photographers formulary, I believe. Um, anyway, I'll research and put a link below. So as you can see on this other camera here, I put it on here and I just kind of pour it along the edge of the print. And then I just drag the weight of the, uh, the coating rod along the top of the print just to make sure I'm coating it all the way. And then I'll bring it back very often and then make sure I've coated it all the way, draw it off once like that, and I'm all done. Now what I'll do with this is take it and put it on a drying rack over here. Make sure I've got good coating. Yes. And I'm going to put it over here on a drying rack and I'm going to let that dry. And then I'll come back to you in a little while and we'll move on. Um, next up, we'll be making the gum layer on here and mixing it with the dichromate so that it too is light uh, sensitive. And we will, we will once again coat this piece of paper and then I will remarry the negative here that I have uh, with it. We will register it up and I'll make another exposure on this and add the new gum layer on. So let me put this over in the drying rack and I'll be back with you in a minute here. All right. So uh, it's been about 20 minutes or so and the print has dried, the sizing on the print has dried. And uh, as you can see, and uh, I'll show it on this camera as well, you can see that the print is still stable. There hasn't been any change in it. So I'm really happy for that. And like I told you before, I had already done a sizing test on a, a smaller print before and found out that it did in fact work. And uh, I'm just glad that I, uh, you know, that it worked again in front of you on camera. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to coat it with the um, the gum by or the, uh, the the pigment and the um, gum arabic and the ammonium dichromate. Now I'll set the print right here, getting it ready to go. Now I've got two little rollers here. These rollers I use to put on uh, the um, the gum layer. One of them, as you can see, is darker than the other one. One of them I used just to roll on initially. And then the other one I use to kind of break out any bubbles and to even it out if I need be. So I'll put those over to the side here. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I've got pigment here that's mixed in with gum arabic. Now I've had this mixed up for a while. I shake it quite often um, every time that I use it so that the pigment hasn't settled out in there. But what this is, there's no light, light sensitivity to it whatsoever until I add the dichromate to it. Now anybody or any of you watching that might be familiar with um, gum bichromate printing would know that uh, variation, different um, dilutions of ammonium dichromate, you know, give different results. So anyway, um, I use a 30% solution. That is kind of a low contrast solution. Um, if I was to use say a 20% or a 8% or a 4% even, that would up the contrast of the image that I'm going to produce with the gum bichromate. I want something that's going to be kind of flat because I don't want it to change or overpower the original image that I have here. So what I'm going to do is something that's going to give me just kind of what would be more of like a zone five in black and white printing, just kind of a middle gray. 
but in this case it will be a middle um, French ochre. Now I, I like to use a French ochre pigment for my highlights and that's what I'm going for in this one. Uh, and it, it's just a really nice color. It kind of gives a warmth to it. Um, and like I said earlier, I also like to use a second layer in my black and white prints that would add in a, um, a cooler uh, layer of color to the shadow detail. And, and in this one, as you can see, it's kind of cool in the shadows already. So I'm kind of hoping that I can perhaps even skip that step. So we'll see what happens here. Now another thing I would normally do is to mask this image off with some tape before I put the gum bichromate on there, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm, in fact, I'm, I'm more interested in seeing a little bit of slop overs here and there so that it will kind of show me what the color has done to the original image. Um, so I'm going to put that aside. What I want to do here is I also use a uh, an old film canister, Kodak film canister, uh, to mix up my pigment with my dichromate. And what I want to do is the, the pigment and the gum arabic, I want to mix probably a one-to-one -one solution with the uh, ammonium dichromate. So I'm going to just put in here maybe a quarter inch in the bottom and I'm going to match that with the same amount of ammonium dichromate. Shake this up and spill it out here on my piece of plexiglass that I like to use to put the, excuse me, to put the dichromate on. So First, I've shaken this up really well, so I'll pull the cap off and pour a little bit of, uh, pour about that much as you can see, just about a quarter inch down in there. Put the pigment off to the side. Um, then I'm going to take the ammonium dichromate. This is, again, as I said, a 30% solution. I'm going to put just about the same amount in there. There we go. So it all equals out to about a half an inch of solution in there. So I close the dichromate so there's no chance of spilling it anywhere. I put the uh, cap on the uh, film container, shake it up real good. Now again, uh, if you want to be really careful with this, I would use um, nitrile gloves when you're doing this, but just for the purpose of this demonstration and because I'm extremely careful about not doing this, about not getting it on my skin, that I'm not going to worry about it right now. So there we go. Put that off to the side. I'm going to dump the pigment, gum arabic, and now ammonium dichromate on there. And I'm going to pick it up with my roller. As you can see, I'm going to roll it out kind of evenly on my roller. Now you can see the, the, the yellow that's in there right now is not the French ochre that I'm using. It's a much more subdued yellow than that. That yellow is the dichromate and that will come out in the wash when I, when I go to process this print after I've made my exposure. But just to tell you that that's not the color I'm using. Anyway, let me get this on here. I'll start to roll it on the print, but I'm going to be very careful not to overbrush too much. And I like to go side to side as well as the long way and to flip the brush over and make sure that I get the edges nicely. Now again, I normally would have this masked off so I wouldn't be concerned with doing this right now. I'm going to pull a little bit more off there just to get this corner nice. Great. And that looks good. Now I don't even think I'm going to go to my second roller here because it's, this color always goes on really nice for me. So as you can see, we have it coated there. And what I'm going to do now is let this dry, but it is now light sensitive. And here in the dark room or the dim room as I call it, I just have four 40 watt uh, or four 60 watt equivalent LED lights with warm, warm, uh, warm soft light. Um, and I never have any problems with fogging. Uh, where you would want to be um, careful is if you've got sunlight coming in a window or something, just put up some shades or whatever if you're doing this at home. So I'm just going to put this over my drying rack. We're going to let this dry and then I'm going to come back to you and I'll have the print frame and the negative ready to go. We will re-register the image and then we will uh, put it in the print burner over there. All right, stick with me. Okay, so. Again, we're dry. Now make sure it's good and dry before you put the negative back together with it because if it's a wet uh, print, it's going to destroy your negative. So um, yeah, you can see here that 
it looks good image still looks really good um, that yellow is going to wash out uh, so what we're going to do right now is i'm going to take the original negative again motion to emulsion and i'm going to take it back here on the light table and we're going to re-register it now what I'm doing is just making sure that everything lines up quite well. Now what some people do in this part of the process is to use registration pins. Um, I don't have a setup for that at this point. Um, for smaller prints, it doesn't really matter that much. It's easy enough to line up this way. So I'm going to get that all set up there. Beautiful. All right, now I'm gonna run a piece of tape across the top here just to make sure that I keep it into in registration. And I'm gonna bring that over here to do the, uh, the print frame. And uh, carefully put that down inside of there and put the back on. Okay, so now that I've got that in there, it's time to take it over to the plate burner and, uh, and um, burn it in there. So what I'm going to do on the LED burner is put it on for about one minute. Normally, um, I would be making, say, a platinum palladium image in here. It'd say it would take four minutes on that printer um, or on that plate burner. Uh, I think that one minute exposure is going to do fine for what I want it to do in this print. So let me go over there and get that exposure going. There we go. Now I will let that go uh, while I've got you here um, and uh, just say that the next thing that I have to do here uh, is to uh, rinse this out. There's no development that needs to be done, but I do have to process the print and I will be processing the print over in the sink and just basically a tra tray of lukewarm water to begin with. Now that first tray I normally use for just the diachromate to come out in the first 20, 30 seconds. The dichromate washes out of that and it stains that first bath kind of yellow. And I like to keep that first bath because I'm very careful about the way I dispose of that. I dispose of it in a, uh, an evaporation system that I have here. Um, I don't normally let the dichromate, at least in big, big amounts like that, go down the drain. Okay? Because I'm on a septic system and that's a whole other video if you want to check that out. I think I can link in as many videos to show you. Uh, so anyway, yeah, while that's exposing, I'm going to get the trays set up and I'll come back to you in a minute. All right? Okay, so I'm set up over here in the, uh, in the sink now with just a warm, a lukewarm tray of water. Uh, and this is going to be my dichromate bath. What I'm going to do is put the print into here first and all of the dichromate will come out of it pretty much in the first bath. And then I'm just going to put this tray aside and go into the other tray here so that we can watch as the, uh, as the dichromate processes out. Now what's going to happen with the dichromate process here or the, the gum bichromate is all the areas where the light hit kind of harden um, and the other areas don't and they wash out in the, uh, in the water. So. Let me go get it out of the, uh, the plate burner right now and we'll see what happened. So as you can see, the original image held in pretty good there. Now one of my problems in earlier um, attempts at this uh, gum over salt was the fact that the, the salt layer was pretty, um, was pretty uh, delicate and what would happen is I would get it wet again and it would lighten and then it sometimes would not darken down and uh, it was a bit of a problem for me. So once I started to tone the images, that was my big experiment now, is I've toned it with gold. And uh, the image thus far seems to be intact. Um, I was having problems in the past, even when sizing. So anyway, uh, it's looking good. Um, it's time now to put it into the bath here. So I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna curl it like this, put it down in face down, so that I am careful to make sure that no bubbles are up under there and uh, you don't want I'm going to keep agitating a bit just to make sure there's no bubbles under there because any bubbles, of course, would prevent the water from touching uh, part of the surface and the emulsion and not washing off the unused uh, um, gum. So anyway, you can see the water is starting to turn yellow and that is because the dichromate is coming out really quickly. So what I'm going to do from now on is not use my fingers but use some tongs to grab onto that. And let's flip it over quickly to see what we've got. Oh yeah. So, as you can see, 
the, uh, the diachromate's starting to come out and uh, it's just leaving the pigment in, which is what I want. Um, now what I'm looking for is just a very thinly veiled tone of, of yellow in here to go into my highlights and, uh, and to help accentuate the shadow detail as well. So um, what I'm gonna do here is this tray is probably pretty well washed all the diachromate out of the print. So I'm gonna hold the print up. I'm gonna slide this tray out of the way. And then I am going to put it back into this tray. And let's see here. We should be able to see the print very nicely there. Yeah, very, very, very pleased. So in effect, so far, this is my first successful gum over salt print. And so far it's doing exactly what I would like it to do in that it's giving me a good monochromatic base for the rest of my uh, process here. So uh, yeah, it's looking successful so far. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it, uh, I'm going to let it sit here for a little while longer, make sure that I wash out all of the unused um, gum, Arabic, and, uh, and let it settle out into a, nice tonality, which it's really already starting to get. I'm really, really happy. <laughs> so this is gonna make things a lot better here. Um, while I do love doing the, uh, the gum over platinum and gum over palladium process, this is gonna make things a little more frugal, if you know what I mean. I mean, silver nitrate in comparison is quite a bit cheaper and, uh, you know, I'm gonna be using the gold toning and I'm gonna try a little bit of palladium, to palladium toning as well to see if it also works in stabilizing the image. But so far, so good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit here a little while longer. I'm gonna wash it out. I'm gonna put it up to dry and then I'll come back and talk to you and we'll see uh, what the final results are, all right? This is really cool. Okay, so here we go. I'm calling this a success. Uh, really beautiful little print all dried out. Um, I'm thinking I might have gone a little too heavy on the yellow. I probably should either uh, lessen my exposure the next time to maybe 30 seconds on the LED box or perhaps even dilute my pigment a little bit more. I don't know, but um, that's about the only issue I have with it is I might have gone a little too yellow on it. Uh, I could tone that down by putting another layer on here. Um, a warmer layer perhaps, maybe a brown or something in here. Um, I'm not really sure and I might try that, but uh, I'm just calling this a success and I'm uh, gonna close out this video here because uh, I'm really, really pleased with this. And uh, it's gonna open up some new possibilities for me and uh, I'm gonna keep experimenting with this and keep refining it. So stick with me, uh, I'll probably be doing some more videos on this as well, uh, but anyway. If you like this one, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and maybe tell a friend about it. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this process and I'm going to keep going. So uh, keep following that playlist. It's linked up here and uh, I hope you're having fun at home in your own dark rooms. All right. Take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.